Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk to you about some of the science behind ginkgo biloba's hair growth promoting effect. Ginkgo biloba is one of the well-known, highly revered hair tonic herbs, meaning that it is both traditionally and conventionally used to treat hair loss and promote hair regrowth. The highly simplistic explanation behind ginkgo biloba's pro-hair effects is that it's a circulatory tonic. So meaning that increases circulation, particularly up to the brain and the scalp, which promotes healthy hair growth. Because after all, every cell, every organ in the body, every tissue in the body needs proper blood flow to thrive. It is through the blood that the hair follicles and every other organ in the body receives its nourishment. The blood carries and delivers various hormones throughout the body, nutrients, vitamins and minerals, enzymes, etc. So obviously healthy circulation is key for good scalp health and therefore good hair health. So that again is the very simplified version of ginkgo biloba's effect on promoting hair growth. However, there are actually a couple of different mechanisms that give ginkgo biloba a powerful ability to help correct hair loss and even promote hair regrowth beyond just its pro-circulatory effects. So I wanna to talk to you about some of those more complex and less commonly talked about attributes of ginkgo biloba and how it may help you systemically over a broad range effect promote hair regrowth and potentially even correct hair loss. So first and foremost, ginkgo biloba has been proven in various clinical trials to reduce cortisol. So it's an anti-stress adaptogenic herb in this way. And cortisol is one of the major key players in the development of all sorts of hair loss, especially the male pattern baldness or the so-called androgenic alopecia. And what cortisol does specifically or primarily in regards to contributing to hair loss is that it actually starves the hair follicle of glucose or energy. So cortisol overall in the body when chronically elevated can inhibit the cellular utilization of glucose. And this is majorly important because with the hair follicle in particular, it cannot sub in free fatty acids for energy. It can't efficiently use alternative fuel sources like ketone bodies, again, fatty acids to make ATP or energy. The hair follicle is one of these unique organs in the body that is highly dependent of glucose to make energy. It is in fact one of the most demanding organs in the body in regards to glucose and oxygen consumption to make ATP or energy. So the hair follicle, like any other organ in the body, needs energy. It thrives off of ATP. So every cell in every organ in the body ultimately needs to be producing biological energy to function and glucose is the primary fuel source to make ATP. Now, the whole keto movement argues that glucose is an inefficient source of energy. It's highly damaging, it causes oxidative stress, etc. but that's simply not true. Many a times I've broken down the difference between a metabolic state of ketosis versus normal oxidative phosphorylation. Beyond that, even if it were true that the other cells and organs of the body could thrive off of, let's say, fatty acids, the hair follicle is not one of them. So all of this is a more thorough way of saying that stress is the major driver of hair loss because stress often stimulates the production of cortisol, a stress hormone, which can over the long term starve the hair follicle of adequate glucose that it needs to make energy and to thrive. And tying this back in with ginkgo biloba, well, as an anti-stress or specifically an anti-cortisol herb, it's going to be majorly beneficial for treating hair loss at the root. Again, most hair loss issues come back to hormonal imbalances that typically involve very high levels of cortisol and other stress hormones. The second major way that ginkgo biloba is gonna be beneficial for correcting hair loss and promoting hair regrowth is due to its anti-serotonin effects. Now, I know you've probably heard that serotonin is this beneficial, feel-good neurotransmitter, but that's not necessarily true. It is actually a class of stress hormones. It tends to rise under stress in fact, it stimulates the production of cortisol. It stimulates other stress hormones like aldosterone, prolactin, and the parathyroid, all which are hormones that are elevated in male pattern baldness and all sorts of stress-related issues. And serotonin can specifically contribute to hair loss on its own by reducing overall blood flow. It generally slows the metabolic rate, which is gonna decrease circulation, and it also is going to directly interfere 
with energy metabolism. And remember, the hair follicle is one of the very energetically demanding organs of the body, so less mitochondrial energy production is going to ultimately mean that the hair follicle is not going to be capable of thriving. The third major way that ginkgo biloba can help with hair loss is by reducing the chronic production of nitric oxide. Now if you haven't yet watched this video we put out yesterday on the roles of nitric oxide in hair loss, be sure to check that video out to learn more. But the short version is that like serotonin, nitric oxide can interfere with the high energy supply of stem cells needed by the hair follicles to grow. So in other words, nitric oxide, like serotonin, generally suppresses mitochondrial function by inhibiting the production of certain enzymes that are responsible for producing energy in the mitochondria of the hair follicle. So in other words, it's going to starve the hair follicle of adequate energy, which means it's going to eventually atrophy and die off and potentially even experience oxidative stress and inflammation. Moving along, if we look at this study here on ginkgo biloba's effect on hair regrowth, it was actually found that ginkgo biloba has inhibitory effects on blood platelet aggregation and thrombin activity. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with these terms, blood platelet aggregation is the accumulation of platelets in the blood, which can lead to thrombrosis, which is another word for blood clotting. So ultimately what ginkgo biloba is doing is preventing blood clots forming in the tiny capillaries and circulatory system upwards to the scalp, resulting in healthier and clearer blood flow. But there's other ways in which ginkgo biloba can actually promote blood flow and blood circulation overall. So going back to nitric oxide and serotonin. Now we learned that these substances can generally interfere with good energy production in the body, but they also tend to elevate when carbon dioxide levels are low. So in a sense, they oppose carbon dioxide. And as I talk about in the earlier video on the roles of nitric oxide in hair loss, carbon dioxide is actually the major regulator of healthy blood flow. It is what's primarily responsible for relaxing the smooth muscle throughout the entire circulatory system. So it's a vasodilator in a sense. So not only does it have this antithrombrotic-like activity, preventing clot formation, so that way the circulatory system is not being impeded by blood clots, but it also is going to be promoting the production of carbon dioxide by reducing serotonin and nitric oxide, which means healthier blood flow and blood circulation overall. So it's likely through its anti-cortisol, anti-serotonin, and anti-nitric oxide effects that ginkgo biloba is capable of acting as such a powerful circulatory tonic because all three of those stress hormones will directly inhibit good blood flow by causing vasoconstriction. So that's the more thorough explanation behind ginkgo biloba's pro-hair effects. It talks about the underlying physiological mechanisms behind ginkgo biloba's ability to improve the health of the hair, correct things like hair loss, and even promote hair regrowth. Ultimately, what ginkgo biloba is doing by acting as an anti-stress tonic in many different ways is going to promote good overall energy production. Remember, stress robs energy. That's why stress can leave you feeling depleted and fatigued and low energy because it interferes with your body's ability to produce energy on a cellular level. And your hair follicle is one of the most demanding organs in regards to energy. It wants energy more than any other organ. And if it doesn't get it, it's likely going to fall out over a matter of time because the hair follicle is not as important of an organ to your body as, let's say, the heart, the liver, the brain, the kidneys. So decreasing overall stress is the primary goal from my understanding and my research for correcting hair related issues. It's always related to stress. Even if that stress isn't psychological for you, it could be physiological. So many things cause a stress response in the modern world. Estrogen stimulates the stress response. Estrogen stimulates the adrenal glands to produce cortisol and it shuts off the feedback loop between the pituitary and the adrenals causing a chronic production of cortisol. And most people are heavily exposed to estrogen and they're not even aware of it. The estrogens are in the food and water. A lot of the foods people eat today that are considered healthy are highly estrogenic. A lot of vegetables, a lot of grains, legumes, beans, nuts and seeds have estrogenic properties. A lot of the food containers we eat our food out of, that we buy our beverages out of, 
a lot of our clothing, a lot of the things we put on our skin, the perfumes, all of this stuff is heavily estrogenic, not to mention alcohol. So if you're somebody experiencing hair loss and you don't feel like you're this stressed out person, it's still probable that you have an over accumulation of estrogen in the body, stimulating a stress response, leading to elevated levels of things like cortisol, serotonin, nitric oxide, amongst others. So again, as always, if you're somebody experiencing any sort of hair loss, the goal would be to reduce the production of all these various stress hormones. There's so many ways and different angles you could come at it from. So if you want to learn more beyond just this video on our YouTube channel, we do have an entire online course that's very popular with our subscribers that you can find on our Wellness Academy in the description box below. Otherwise, if you're looking for a simple place to start and something to begin experimenting with, I would highly recommend supplementing with Ginkgo Biloba. In my opinion, it's one of the best hair tonic herbs out there, not just because it increases circulation, but it does truly target hair loss on a very root level and very systemically. However, that does bring this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're new here and you wanna see more videos like this. And again, if you're interested in learning more about the Forever Healthy Hair course or supplementing with some ginkgo biloba for these reasons, you can find both of those in the description box below.